Hi guys, my name is Karthik and I am from EziraAdamation.com and welcome to another video from EziraAdamation. And today we're going to talk about how we can write a framework grade code in Selenium in under 5 minutes with the power of modern toolings like IntelliJ IDE for example. So IntelliJ is very very popular IDE if you have heard about and this IDE supports a lot of different development tools like C Sharp, Java, Kotlin, JavaScript and it has a lot of different toolings as you already know. But they also have features to write better automation testing code, for instance, Selenium as well. For example, if you go and type Selenium, you will see that there is a department for quality assurance. And if you go to the quality assurance in the JetBrains, you will see that they have a section separately dedicated for the Selenium where you can write the Selenium automation code much, much easily. I mean, they have everything baked inside that particular plugin as you can see over here, the Selenium UI testing plugin. And they support a lot of different frameworks and libraries like Selenium, Fluentlium, Allure reporting, and also they support a lot of different test runners as well as the page object model generators, which is pretty cool. I will show you all these things in this video and you will understand how powerful it is to use this plugin in IntelliJ to write a better automation testing code. So for doing that, I have already installed the IntelliJ ID in my machine, just to get the latest version. And I already have an ultimate edition because I have the license for the IntelliJ. So I'm gonna be using that. So I'm gonna create a new project over here. I have already installed this Selenium plugin in my IntelliJ IDE. So if you're gonna be installing the IntelliJ IDE for the first time, you'll not see this particular option, but once you install this Selenium plugin, you will have this particular option over here. You can create a new project with a Selenium template as well. So I'm gonna use the Selenium template and then I'm gonna call this as Selenium IntelliJ and Selenium demo. And I'm gonna choose Java as the language and build system is gonna be Maven and the test framework is gonna be test ng and I'm gonna give a group name as com.ea and I'm gonna choose the JDK as 14 as usual. And then you can see that there is something called as an add sample code. So this sample code is gonna be automatically added for you with some of the sample codes that you can write by yourself. I'm just gonna leave this guy as it is so that you can see what it generates. And once you hit this next button, you will be presented with a lot of different options like execution and reporting as a dependencies. You can see that by default, they have selected the Selenium Allure framework and Selenide, but I'm not gonna choose this Selenide because it is gonna be the one which is very, very powerful. I'm not gonna be using this. Similarly, I'm not gonna use Serenity, Serenity BDD or Fluent Lenium. I'm just gonna use the Web Driver Manager. But if you see here, if you're gonna be a novice for the automation testing that too in the Selenium world, you will not even know about these kind of library exist unless until you go deep into Selenium after some time, like some years. But with this particular plugin, you are already being presented with some of the most famous libraries which is used in the Selenium community. And that's all in here, which is great. And that is a very helpful feature of the IntelliJ ID itself. It's gonna present you all the different libraries. And once I choose this WebDriver Manager, and then if I go, you will see that there is another section which has got the assertions. Who knows in future, there are gonna be logging options and stuff coming up automatically by this particular plugin. But as of now, they have not added that particular section, but I guess in soon, they're gonna be adding these dependency sections as well. But for now, they only have the execution and reporting. And in the assertions, I'm gonna choose the assert J, very, very popular library, uh, which is gonna help you write a better fluent assertions. So I'm gonna choose that. And once I have these libraries in place, I can then hit this create. And once I click this create button, you will see that the whole codes are gonna be scaffolded for me automatically by the project template of the Selenium. So you will see that it has installed everything for me and you will see that this is like a framework grade code already available for you with all the dependencies. For example, what I really mean about the framework grade code is that they already have the page object model code, they already have all the dependencies, they already have the project structure, like how you need to create the project. They also have added a browsers.json file, which is gonna be useful for you to run the code in the Docker container, in the Serenade on Docker. And they also have the Maven commands over here. And they also have the code to run a sample test over here. And you can see that almost all these code that is required for you to execute is already there, which is super cool. And now that you can see that in the page object model code, they also have a code which defines how you can write the page object model codes 
for that particular functionality. So if I just go to the main page dot test over here, by default, since we have added the web driver manager, I don't know for some reason this particular plugin doesn't really add, adds the web driver manager in the before all method or something like that. So if you try running this test, for instance, this one, and I'm gonna run this particular search test, this test is eventually gonna fail because the web driver manager has not been created yet. So you will see that it's gonna throw us an error here saying that the path to the executable driver does not exist for the Chrome or something like that. So we basically need to add that particular uh, annotation alone. For example, before test public void initialize browser. And then we need to add this web driver manager dot chrome driver dot setup this particular line. This will instantiate the web driver manager, download all the required Chrome drivers for us, and then it will run the test for us. So if we try running the test this time, the code is eventually gonna work. But you will notice that the test has already written us like how you can set up the drivers and also how you tear down the drivers after the test execution has been done and how you can write a simple page object model code. And you see that the code is already up and running. So you will get started with Selenium in under five minutes, like a framework grade code. But this is not just it about this particular plugin that I'm talking about. There are also more about this particular plugin. For example, if you're gonna be automating one of the application, for example, the eaapp.swami.com website, so you can automate that using the page object model code much, much easily. So if you go select any of the package, and then if you select the new, and then if you see here, there is something called a Selenium page object. So this is, another way that you can add the page object model code directly into your project. So if I hit this, you will see that it will present you a window saying file name of the page or model code that you want to be adding. So I'm going to say EA uh, login page, for instance, and then I need to add the URL of the page, which is going to be app.swami.com, this one. So I'm just going to add that. And you will see that it will also present you the language that you wanted to write this page object model code, which is gonna be Java, for instance, over here. And similarly, the framework is gonna be Selenium. So you can also choose different framework, but you can't because you have not threaded on the first window. That's the reason the other frameworks are kind of hidden over here. Someone chose Selenium, and you can customize the page object model template, which we'll talk later on. But for now, let's hit the OK button. And once I do that, you will notice that the page object model code is already been created for us, the EA login page, as you can see over here. And you'll also see that it has scaffolded a class with the page factory init element of driver of this, which is super because now that you have to do this, it is done for you automatically using the scaffolded code. And now let's start writing the code over here. It's like a record and playback code. It also has the selector. It also has the dev tool options. It also has the way you can write the code with much better identifiers. Everything is available in this particular window. And I will show you what I really mean. For instance, if I want to click this login button, right? You can just go and see all the different way that you can find the login button. I'm sure that this is the login button is, is available in this particular LI which is this one. And once I click that, you will see that the login link is been highlighted. So I can go over here and then I can right click and I can say that add the page object. It will add the page object model page over here, which was not working for me for some reason, but it worked for the other pages. But I will show you what I really mean about that. So let's say if I wanted to click this particular login button, so let me do that one over here and you'll understand how this page is going to be generated for me automatically for this page. I don't know for some reason for the first link, uh, for the first page, it is not really generating uh, the home page, but for the login page, it is working fine. So I can actually choose the element over here, the username and password by finding the elements from the body over here. And that I can do using this refresh button. So once I refresh it, the whole page is going to be, I mean, the whole DOM object is going to be refreshed and it's already done over here. I can use this select element in the page just by the F3 button. And then once I hover here, do you see that it is also going to show me the input of the username, something like that. And once I click it, you will see that it is automatically going to navigate me to that particular control, the username control over here. And now I can right click and you can see that I can either add a data attribute selector or 
I can also add the ID, name, and the tag with class CSS XPath, something like that. So basically you are now holding and control of how you can identify or select an element using an identifier much, much easily without using any Chrome dev tools or any other third party tools. You can just use all the identification option right into this particular IDE itself. So you don't even have to go out of the IDE, do it from the browser and then come back to the IDE. You can do everything now within this particular IntelliJ IDE itself, which is great. So now I can choose the ID and you see that the code is generated for us automatically. This is what I was talking about. The first page, the home page, for some reason, the login button code is not being generated. But once I do it in this particular page, it is generating the code. I don't know what is that. So, but yeah, this is working. And now I can keep changing my code over here. Let's say txt username. And similarly, if I wanted to do for the password, I can just once again, F3, go to the password, right click, add to the page object by ID, and you can see that it is coming up. So I can just say txt password. And if I want to click that particular button, the login button, I can once again do this, go to the login button over here, and then add to page. You can tag with the class or CSS or the XPath, whatever it is. So you can tag the class, for example. And you see that this is a bug as well. It's just creating a default as the name. So default is a reserved keyword in Java, so it doesn't work that way. So you gotta be changing that to BTN, something like that. Uh, that's it. So we could able to generate the code as well. And similarly, we can write the functionalities of like how you can write the login functionality. So you can just do public string password. And then we can say just txt username dot send keys of the username. And similarly, txt password dot send keys of password. And finally, we can perform the btn login dot submit. And the reason why I'm doing submit is because this is basically a type as submit and I need to perform a submit operation rather the click operation. So you can see that all the important attributes of that particular control is also coming up for me so that I don't even have to hunt around and identify what it is. It is coming for me over here. So these are some of the most helpful options that I have got over here in the IntelliJ's Selenium test plugin. And this is gonna make our life much, much easier. And as I told you, we can also verify some of the network traffic or some other details about the page or the DOM elements by clicking this open dev tools over here. So once I click this open dev tool, do you see that we also get the dev tools, which is gonna be pretty much exactly the same tool that you can actually imagine to get within your Chrome browser over there. So now if I want to select the uh, username using ID, then I can just put double dollar of something like that. And you will see that I get the control username form control over here. So it is pretty cool. So you can get the Chrome dev tool as well embedded within this particular plugin. And the other option which I was talking about, about the customized page object template is also available over here. For instance, the code which is generated by the template is always public, public, public for all the web elements, right? If you wanted to even change that particular model of generating the code into private, you could do that as well. You can see that there is Selenium Java page object dot Java over here. So this code, you can just go over here and you can see that every time it is actually generating the code for the list of web element, as you can see over here, it generates something like this. Similarly, for the other controls, it is generating the code with the public. If you wanted to change that particular operation, you could do that as well. So you can just go ahead and change from the public to private, for instance. Similarly, for the other frameworks like the Fluentlium or the Selenium Groovy or the Selenium Kotlin, you could do the exact same thing. You have the control over customizing the page object templates over here. And also, if you will notice here, the select hours that you are choosing, the ID and the CSS, there is also a bit of information here in the class file saying that this is related to using an ID, this is related to using CSS, something like that. And if you wanted to add the page object model code anytime, you can just go to existing page, for example, the main page over here, you see that there is this button, something like the 
window of a plus once you click it you will notice that it is directly taking you to the page for which this particular class file is representing and this is done using this page url is equal to this one you see that it automatically takes me to that particular page similarly if i go back to the ea login page and if i click this page the add page elements over here you will notice that it is going to take me directly to the ea app.swami.com web page and this is very very interesting to notice that sometimes we don't even know this particular class is representing which actual page of our application if that's confusion for you for a larger project this option that you are seeing over here is going to be very very helpful it is going to take you directly to that particular page i mean this is really good so this is one way that you can control over the page of the model code using the selenium plugin and that's it guys this is how we can make use of the selenium's ui test plugin of intellij ide to write a better selenium automation code and better page object model code and there are even more potential of this particular plugin which we have not talked something like the allure reports and also how we can run the test using the selenoid to run in the docker container directly and also we have not talked about how we can run the code directly with fluent assertions of the assert js and stuff those things are not part of this particular video but you already got the idea of how you can write a better automation testing code using this particular plugin so that's it guys once again thanks for watching this video catch you in the next one